All right, this is gonna be one hell of a week because I am on a mission to craft the greatest Neapolitan pizza that has ever existed, at least on YouTube, that is. <laughs> now, I have trained with some of the best and I've been honing in on my pizza game for the last few years. And at some point, you just gotta flex your skills and that's what this video is all about. And you might be asking, well, what makes the greatest pizza? And in my opinion, it comes down to sourcing the best ingredients, of course, bringing your top-notch skills and technique, and most importantly, making every single element completely from scratch. So buckle up, because we are going on a Neapolitan pizza adventure. Let's talk about pizza sauce. So every pizza place that you love is most likely using canned tomatoes to make their pizza sauce and everyone has their own preference. But for me, I will say the best pizza sauce that I was ever making in my life was a few years back when I did my canning project with Christina, if you remember that video. And luckily for me, it's canning season right now. I've got a bunch of tomatoes in the garden, but that is certainly not enough, especially because of these asshole burners that keep eating all of my tomatoes. So I called in a little backup from my friend and farmer Connor, who's not only gonna be delivering a bunch of tomatoes from his farm, but also helping me out with this canning project. Oh my God. <laughs> Talk about bringing in the backup right now. <laughs> so this is all picked. At Happy Now Farm, our little vegetable farm. This is Mia. You've never packed tomatoes, right? This is your- Better ones. We might need more jars, oh boy. The first step to any jarring or canning process is sanitizing sanitizing the vessels that will hold the tomatoes. In this case, I'm using the same mason jars from when I jarred up tomatoes with Christina. So I'll throw those in the dishwasher to get them nice and sanitized and ready for use. So we've got Connor and me over here taking out the stem. And you can either do it that way or you can boil and cut it out after. Now that our tomatoes are cored and cleaned up, I'm gonna be moving into the process to remove the skins. And to do that, you gotta get a big old pot of water on the boil and I'm gonna start dunking in the tomatoes and every tomato is a bit different but generally they're going to take around two to three minutes and a great sign that you know they're done is when you start seeing a few cracks in the actual skin once they're done boiling i'm going to transfer them directly to an ice bath which is going to shock the tomatoes and help release the skin and you can see they're basically just slipping right off the tomato at this point and i find the best way to do this is to peel off the skins directly into a jar so that juice that's being lost is going directly into the holding container and just continue this process until you've peeled all of your tomatoes. Ugh. Now, a quick disclaimer, most canning recipes will call for the addition of citric acid to lower the pH level of the tomato. But the way I learned from Christina is that if you're using really high quality tomatoes that are high in acid, this step isn't completely necessary. But this is my personal preference, so can at your own risk. So once you removed all your tomato skins, it's time to fill up the jars. And you're gonna have a mixture that's part juice and part whole tomatoes. So when you're filling up your jars, just try to get a nice mix of both. And make sure you only fill them up to that bottom rim leaving a little room for expansion when these tomatoes cook. So I just canned my first four and I realized I am missing one ingredient. Let's take a trip out to the garden. Boom, right here. So Christina, she put a basil leaf in every single jar. Purple, green, whatever you need. It's just like a nice light infusion, just one leaf. Oh yeah, that's some good basil. So I'll put one bigger basil leaf per jar or a few small ones. And for every canning project, I'm using brand new lids. So you just wanna make sure you soak them in some soapy water and wash them off before they hit the jar so they're nice and clean. And then I'm gonna tighten up the jars using a little bit of extra elbow grease to make sure I don't have any issues issues in the next process. Once my liquid is boiling, I'm gonna use these special little jar holders to gently place each jar in the pot. And I'll boil these for about 45 minutes to create the perfect seal and make them shelf stable. And once your jars come out of the boiling water, just place them aside. And over the next few hours, you should start to hear some of those pops of the lid, which is a great sign that you properly canned your tomatoes. And make sure the next day you just check that those lids are indented and properly sealed, which is the 
the sign that these things are sealed and are shelf stable for a good year. So I'll be saving most of these for the winter, but I'll be transforming two of these big daddies right now for a really simple pizza sauce. I'll slice up a few cloves of garlic nice and thin, get a pot preheating on the burner at a medium heat, toss in a good bit of olive oil and start slowly sauteing that garlic to infuse the oil. And then I'll dump in my whole tomatoes, which you can see are super chunky and also very liquidy. So I'll just mash these up to get a nice consistent sauce and reduce this until you have the perfect pizza sauce consistency and finally season to taste. So I am certainly not gonna sit here and tell you that my pizza dough recipe is the end all be all. There are a million different ways to get good results when it comes to pizza dough, but there are definitely three key elements that every home cook should be focused on. And the first thing is nailing down the right flour. Now, when it comes to pizza making, you see this double zero flour a lot from Italy, and that stands for the finest milled flour, which is why when you get a good Neapolitan pizza, it's nice and tender and a super soft crumb. But as you can see, this is 100 percent soft wheat. So a really tender product, but it's going to lack a little bit of structure, which is why I like to balance it out with just some high protein bread flour, which will bring in more of that elasticity and more of that crumb. When I was cooking with Vito, he added Manitoba flour, which is the Italian term for a bread flour. But it's all about experimentation. Every pizzaiola is going to have their own desired blend that's going to suit their taste. So for me, I just like splitting it right down the middle. I'm going to do 500 grams of this double zero soft wheat flour and 500 grams of this bread flour. Now the next key element is the best flavored pizza dough is extending your fermentation. Probably one of the biggest mistakes people make is dumping in one of those full yeast packets and those things are powerful. That's a lot of yeast. And guess what? If you do too much, your dough is going to rise so fast it's going to have no flavor. So for a thousand grams of flour, I'm just doing half a teaspoon of yeast. And finally, the last thing to nail down is your high hydration percentage, which simply means the percent of water to flour. Now, generally the perfect range for pizza is between 60 and 70%. The higher you go, the more tender that crumb, but the harder to actually work. And if you go lower, your crust will be a little more dense, but it will be easier to work. I find that 65% right in the middle gives me great results. So if I have a thousand grams of flour, that means 650 grams of water. And then finally, your last ingredient is salt, which is right around 2% which is 20 grams in this case. And I'll just give this a very rough mix until it's all hydrated together and let that sit for about 15 minutes. So you can knead your pizza dough, but I prefer to do a more gentle sort of folding process. And a little bit of water is always gonna be helpful. Keep your hands non-stick. Just kind of folding it over itself. Really, really simple. And you just wanna do that about two, three, four times until it really starts tightening up on you. And you can see already we've got a nice smooth dough. No kneading necessary. I'll let that sit for another 10 minutes and we'll do one more stretch and fold. All right, this should be the final stretch and fold. What the Hands just a little bit, stretch, or just a roll. Tightening everything up, boom. And then that's just like silky smooth, like a baby's booty. So now, one of the most underrated kitchen tools ever, I don't know what you would call this, sort of like a chef -y plastic bin. I'm gonna hit it just with a little bit of olive oil so it doesn't stick. Blip, 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 blip. Place our beautiful dough ball right in here. Cap that. And now we can very easily monitor the growth of this fermentation process. So you can see we're about at one and a half liters. We want this to double in size. So we're gonna be close to around here when we're done. And since we didn't do that much yeast, this should take a few hours. It's not gonna take 45 minutes. And that is a good thing. Slower fermentation, more flavor. Now again, going back to that key point on extending the fermentation, what I'm gonna do is put a damp towel over this so they stay nice and moist. And then I'll also just put a little bit of saran wrap to lock in the moisture. And then these will go in the fridge overnight. They could probably spend two nights in there for even more flavor, but you don't wanna overproof them. So those will be perfect to make pizza tomorrow morning. So we've got our pizza sauce and we've got our dough balls. And considering this is the greatest pizza of all time, well, it wouldn't be proper if we didn't make mozzarella from scratch. 
Now, I'm new to making mozzarella, but I've been experimenting over the last few weeks and I'm getting a lot better. And what I love about the process is that it only takes about 30 minutes to make. And even more importantly, you can control the milk that you use. And believe me, I tried to get buffalo milk, the true Italian way of making mozzarella, but I failed on that journey. So I'm just using the highest quality local milk that I can find and I've got a gallon of it. The first step is to add your milk to a nice clean pot. I'm using a gallon of non-homogenized milk, which is super crucial if you're gonna have success with your mozzarella cheese. Next, I'll add one and a half teaspoons of citric acid to one cup of cool water. And then I'll add that mixture into the milk, whisking pretty vigorously to make sure everything is nice and incorporated, which is gonna be making our milk more acidic, lowering that pH level to give it more of that final stretch when we go to make mozzarella. Oh. Then I'll slowly be bringing the milk up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, making sure to stir occasionally so you don't burn the bottom. And while that's heating up, I'll prepare my rennet solution. I'm using liquid rennet and just following the exact instructions right on here, which requires a quarter teaspoon mixed into a quarter cup of cool water. And then once that milk hits just about 90 degrees, I'll slowly pour in that rennet mixture, giving it a few stirs for about 30 seconds. The goal here is to evenly incorporate the rennet without over mixing the milk, which is why you cut it off at 30 seconds. And then it's just a waiting game so those curds can form. So the general recipes tell you like five minutes for curd setting, but this actually took about 30. You can see if I slip my knife in, look at this. Now that we've got some nice curds, I'm gonna start slicing into them with a long serrated knife in a checkerboard pattern. And then once these curds are cut up, I'll slowly mix them together while bringing up the temperature to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And I find that this step is a lot easier easier if you just use your hands and really get a feel for what's going on with the curds. So we're getting the temperature. You can see these curds are a little bit milky, a little bit juicy. We want them a little tighter than that. I can feel them firming up. That's why it's nice to get in there with your hands. All right, we've pretty much hit 105. I'm gonna turn the burner off, stirring for a few more minutes to firm up those curds. So now that our curds are broken up, they're starting to firm up a bit. I'm just gonna let them settle to the bottom. And once they've settled, I can strain off all of the whey, which is gonna take a little bit of time. And you wanna do this very gently, really protecting those curds, trying to get as much whey separated from the solid curd. So now that I've removed most of that residual whey from the curds, I'm ready to make some mozzarella. The first step is just ripping up the curds into tiny pieces, pretty much just following the natural seams. So what I'm going to do is heat up some of that residual whey, which is going to be used to actually form our mozzarella. I'm going to get that as close to boiling as I can, pretty much whatever my hands can handle. And I'll heavily salt this mixture, which is ultimately going to season our mozzarella. And then I'll slowly start pouring over that super hot seasoned whey over my curds, which is going to heat up your curds so you can start stretching and forming them into your final mozzarella shape. Just like a pizza ball. It looks exactly like dough. Wow, you can just feel that this thing is right. This has gotta be the best mozz I have made to date. And I gotta say, this is very similar to sourdough. There's certainly science involved, but it's such an art form. The only way to get better is just by learning the feel of the process. And also just like sourdough, the joy is kind of in the struggle. First try, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's my best yet. Slightly springy, not too much salt, but just enough. Mmm, the chew is incredible. Wow, wow, that's good. <laughs> that's impressive. One thing I've learned for sure on my pizza journey is that when it comes to Neapolitan pizza, simplicity and sticking to tradition is the key to success. But, but. <laughs> there is one thing that I like to add that I just think amplifies the experience just a little bit. That's just one little thing. Move this ugly chair. And it comes from this herb bed right here. Boom, big old patch of oregano. We can just rip this out. Oregano, obviously a 
classic Italian flavor. Something that I think goes so well with the ingredients we're putting on this pizza. But the question is, how do we add it? So if you remember Chef Eric Wang who came on this channel to make some incredible fried chicken, that garlic oil he made from the garlic tops completely blew my mind and I have been making so many herb oils. And one thing I love to do is turn this oregano. I'm just putting everything in there because these stems are pretty delicate so they can just blend up. Dump in a bunch of neutral oil. I'm using grapeseed. Blend it up. Oh yeah. And then I'll get this in a pot, bring it up to a boil for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then quickly pop that into an ice bath to cool everything down so it retains that beautiful color. And it's as simple as that. You can do it with any herb, but this oregano oil is gonna be such an aromatic flavor blast on this pizza. All right, these babies have been sitting overnight. Ooh. So you can see they've expanded a little bit. They shouldn't rise too much. If your fridge is nice and cold, you don't want these to overproof. Right now it's like 90 degrees outside, it's super hot. So they're gonna continue to just expand a little bit as we start cooking up these pizzas. So I think I've got all the supplies, mozz, oil, tomato sauce. There's one more thing I gotta snack. All right, last ingredient, I swear. But without this, you're not making the best pizza of all time. Perfect patch. Just rained last night. Oh yeah. Oh, a few of these, beautiful basil. Now let's make some pizza. So we are all set up for success. I've got the uni rocking and rolling, but I just wanted to take a minute to tell you about something that I am so excited to announce, which is the launch of my brand new multi-brand e-commerce shop at prohomecooks.com. As most of you know, I've been working with some incredible kitchen brands on my YouTube channel over the last five years. And what I've done is I've teamed up with my favorite brands to bring you a shopping experience curated specifically for the pro home cook. For instance, my new blender that I've been using that a lot of you have been asking about that I made the herb oil in today. That's my favorite blender from Zwilling. We're carrying that in the shop. Or the knife I use by Deadfish. They're an incredible brand. Or maybe you're in a market for the Dutch oven today to cook the tomato sauce. I was using one of my favorites by Kana. And honestly, I'm so excited that we are an official retailer of Uni. You know I've been using these pizza ovens on the channel for many years. This is my absolute favorite, the Karu 16. This thing is a complete beast. So make sure you check out prohomecooks.com if you're looking to level up your kitchen tools. And we are officially ready to make some pizza. I don't think I'm even going to talk through this. I need complete concentration if I'm going to make the perfect Neapolitan pie. Feeling good, feeling good. Lock in that crust like Vito says. Still feeling tender, delicate though. Sprinkle. The sauce. Mmm, look at that sauce. Come on. Homemade cheese. Dot that around. Basil. Little bit of oil on the basil. Tiny bit of salt. We'll just slightly stretch it out like Vito says. And get a nice flame. Oven's hot. Wow, 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 this is looking good. Oh my God. Crispy and crunchy as Vito would say. Great structure. Final touch. I like the freshness that the oregano oil adds at the very end and the color. Just a little bit. It's like seasoning your ramen with an aromatic oil. Oh, yeah, that's all I can say. Outside of it being slightly oval shaped, everything looks pretty damn perfect to me, but of course it's in the taste. We have come a long way to get to this point, my friends. Sauce from scratch, cheese from scratch, dough from scratch, herb oil from scratch, basil grown. <laughs> That's a pretty damn good side angle right there. Under crust. Here we go. Oh my fucking God. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'll tell you right now, that is the best pizza I've ever made. Mmm. Oh my God. Everything is working in a perfect symphony. The first thing is like the sauce blasts you in the face. Then I start tasting the flavor of the dough. Beautiful chew. The cheese has a perfect melt. So success on the homemade mozzarella. And then finally the aromatic hit from that oregano oil. So good. I can certainly say that this is the best pizza that I've ever made. I challenge anyone out there, whether it's another food tuber, tag me with your pizza creations, see if you can top this. This, I think, is the best I possibly can do, at least at this moment. I put in 100% effort, and that is a wrap, my friends. 